Tonight is Monday, June 11th, 2018. This is the regular City Council meeting for the City of St. Peter. It is 7 o'clock p.m. We will call the meeting to order. Would all please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone should have a copy of the agenda in front of them. Are there any changes or corrections to the agenda? If not, is there a motion for approval? So moved, Mr. Mayor. All in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify. Oh, I'm sorry. They may want to second I'll second it. <laughs> sorry. Got ahead of myself. Uh, all in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next, we have the minutes of our May 29th, 2018 meeting. Those minutes appear on pages four through nine. Are there any changes or corrections to those minutes? A quick question. Yes. I just noticed in a card signed by her, um, Sandra Regnor's last name, I'm not sure how it is spelled, but it's- R-E-N-O-R. Okay, it's misspelled in the minutes, just oh, for okay. reference. Yes, it's R-E-N-O-R is the correct spelling. So with that change, any other changes, corrections? If not, is there a motion to approve with that change? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. All in favor of the uh, corrected minutes, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. Next up, we have a public hearing that has been canceled, but Todd's gonna let us know why. <laughs> Mayor members, originally this had been published. We were um, had a request um, through Ecumen to work with the city of Bethel and two other communities on uh, refinancing for their housing projects, um, two of them here, one in Owatonna and one in Hutchinson. Um, since that time, Ecumen has withdrawn their request. Uh, since the notice was already published, this is the appropriate wrap-up. No need to hold the hearing. They've withdrawn their request, but we want to announce that publicly, and then uh, no action is necessary on the part of the council. Right. Okay. Uh, next up, we have visitors. Or is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any agenda item? Seeing no one. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any item whatsoever? Seeing no one, we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda begins in detail on page 10 and concludes with the resolution on pages 27 and 28 and includes the following purchases in excess of $7,500 to WSN construction for window caulking at the community center library for $14,890 to Hancock uh, concrete for stormwater structures for $17,285.93 the following licenses, on sale li uh, liquor license, these are all for the same date, 7 one 18 to 6 30, 19 to El Agave, to the Capitol Room, and Patrick's on 3rd. The Sunday liquor, same dates again, 7 one uh, 2018 to 6 30, 2019 to El Agave, the Capitol Room, and Patrick's on 3rd. We have an off-sale liquor license to Patrick's on 3rd for 7 one 18 to 6 30, 19 a temporary on sale liquor to Mason's uh, Nicollet Lodge number 54 for third, 316 and a half South Minnesota for June 19th, 2018. A show license to Carson and Barnes Circus for 400 Union Street for June 16th, 2018. Uh, we have a list of election judges for the 2018 elect, uh, election. There are 46 names that should appear, and if you want to see them, look online, they we should be there. Uh, then we have uh, employee appointments. There are five employee appointments. They all are for the pool, the swimming pool, and they range in uh, hourly wage from ten twenty-five to twelve dollars an hour, depending on the uh, on the position involved. Plus the regular schedule of disbursements for May twenty-third, twenty eighteen, through June sixth, twenty eighteen. Are there any changes, comments, corrections to the consent agenda? If not, is there a motion for approval? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any questions now? Call the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember Brandt. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Aye. Councilmember Coyne. Aye. Councilmember Zeman. Aye. Councilmember Cardinal. Aye. 
Consent agenda is approved. Next, we have unfinished business, which is the Jefferson Avenue Gardner Road Improvement Project. And uh, Mayor members, handle this one, Todd. Well, I think Jeff and Jeff are going to tag team oh, no. on this one. Um, I know that we entitled this Gardner Avenue, or I'm sorry, Jefferson Avenue Gardner Road Project acceptance. Um, just for clarification, it's all Jefferson Avenue now. Um, but gentlemen, um, if you'd present the item, that'd be great. Okay, thank you, Todd. Um, this project included the uh, construction of petuminous pavement on Gardner Road, which used to be, you know, Jefferson Avenue, which used to be Gardner Road. Uh, that used LRIP financing, local road improvement project fi or program financing. And we had about $250,000 available. We used $225,000 of that funding for that improvement, basically paving that roadway. We also um, used some of our MSA dollars for um, real, or realigning Jefferson Avenue there at the corner that's um, now a um, through roadway not a 90 degree angle there so that was all done as part of the um, improvements along there and also we tied in at the very north end uh, with the roundabout that's done uh, the project that was done with uh, Nicollet County and the school district um, the project also included uh, trail on the east side and also included sidewalk on the north side of Jefferson Avenue um, and then basically adding some curb and gutter along the north side of Jefferson Avenue also, and then some storm sewer in there. So um, SMC has completed the project. The only thing we're waiting on yet from them is the turf to get adequately established. They still need to um, get a minimum 70% uh, established share, but with the LRIP financing, um, the state has asked us to, to final the project as soon as we can, so we're recommending uh, final acceptance, and then we'll uh, recommend withholding the final payment of $24,000 to the contractor until that's adequately established. Questions? Uh, Jeff, when Pete was here the last time, we had something on this, uh, whatever it was, and, and does this, I think I, what my memory serves is there was still some things being withheld or not closed out because of the plantings and seeding. Is that part of this or is that done? Mayor Zima, one of the uniqueness of the project was working with Gustavus and their Arboretum. Um, they have a lot of um, specialty uh, varieties in there, so we were working on that. And a lot of that has takes three years to right. get established. So that was kind of the, the hold up there right. in, in getting that established. So that isn't part of this then, is that what we're saying? Or is that? I, yeah, you may, be, you, you may be talking about the notice of termination form through the MPCA. That's part of every construction project. Um, once turf is adequately established, meaning okay. it's reached this minimum 70% coverage, then we can fill out the notice of termination, okay. comply, you know, saying that we've completed our um, right. proper turf. My recollection is the last time that we were here to talk about this, we included a small change order that relates to the additional g ground coverage and the okay. modifications. Oh, yeah. That amount would be included in this it overall is. total. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? The resolution accepting the Jefferson Avenue Gardner Road project as completed and authorizing final payments to the contractor appears on page 31. Is there a motion for approval? Move the resolution, Mr. Mayor. Second. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Aye. Councilmember Cormier. Aye. Aye. Councilmember Carlin. Aye. Councilmember Brand. Aye. Aye. Resolution passes. Thanks, Jeff and Jeff. <laughs> Next up, we have a city assistance request for the ride across Minnesota. Ma Mayor, members, you've hosted this in the past when it was called the tram or tram. So now it's right across America. Um, this is a request for the Chamber of Commerce who act, acts as the host for this. Um, this year, we are both the start and the end point. So that's why you see two days on this. Although it might look like they're here for five days, that's not accurate. Right back, yeah. Just the first evening and the last evening are they are here. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've held it in Minnesota Square Park. This time around, we're looking to hold it in Gorman Park on July 15th, and again, the final on July 20th. Um, there are a number of things that we would provide to help make this go. I think the most significant of which relates to some street closures on the 5th Street side, um, some regulated parking or more reserved parking on Washington Avenue abutting the park, so on the uh, northbound traffic side or the east side of the roadway. Um, in addition to that, electricity, ability to connect their shower trucks, some of their other support vehicles having spots to park, and making the community center available to them. Um, I think they are very 
excited about the opportunity to be here at Gorman Park for a couple different reasons, but one of which is, is there's inclement or slightly inclement weather. Having the community center available at their disposal is of great value and comfort to their users. They could all camp out in the gym if they needed to. As you know, many of their riders will camp out that first night, much fewer on the last night on the 20th. Um, and again, the list includes all the things that we would be providing for them as well. Um, and they plan to have music and other events and vendors for food on the first night. Um, they will not have music or vendors on the last night, I don't believe, certainly not vendors on the last night. And we have a map within the packet, I think it's on page 35, I'm sorry, 36, <laughs> that shows kind of where everything is going to be located, at least tentatively. As they bring things in, this map could be changed a little bit to try and make sure that their needs are met. Um, but this is generally where it would be located. The last item that I'd like to mention is that they are working cooperatively with the school district and that folks that, um, and, and this is a minority of the folks, but there certainly are folks that drive their vehicle here with their bike on it and then they're going to park their bike over the next five days or so up at the middle school parking lot, what, what we might call the football field parking park lot. Car. Park their car, their vehicle there, and then um, their vehicle would be there the whole time of the, tr of the of the ram and then when they come back that's where they would pick up their car um, and so that's the action plan that they have going on right now the resolution providing support for this and allowing us to do what we say we're going to do which is some you know reserve parking and some street closures and some mosquito spraying are included in your packet on page 37 and 38 Susie just for folks who are watching at home and might not be familiar with it um, you've kind of given some hints along the way, but can you describe exactly what this event is? So this is an event that raises money and it's a bicycle ride across Minnesota. So it's the ride across Minnesota. And so I can't tell you this year how many miles exactly they'll ride, but it's a lot. And so these riders oftentimes have um, family support crew and all those things that are coming along at each of the stops along the way. Um, a few years back, um, well, they used to start in one location and end at a different location. A few years back, they changed it to start and end at the same location. And again, we've hosted this before in the past. So these are cyclists who are coming through, and there will be um, several who, many who choose to pitch tents in the park for that night. Many will choose to pitch tents. Hotels are already booked up. We'll have lots of people in the downtown area eating and doing things like that as well. It's a convenient spot for that here as well. When you say many, you're talking in terms of hundreds. In terms of hundreds, they anticipate around 500 cyclists um, and then additional support family members and those kind of things as well that go along with this. They'll have food trucks and they'll have a band and if someone who lives across the street, I am very excited about this mm -hmm. being part of Brighten My Dull and Empty Existence. It's a really night. colorful event. All the cyclists have, you know, um, cycling gear on and oftentimes it's very colorful. It's a fun event, celebratory event for sure. Probably more so on the last night than on the first night. <laughs> <laughs> this, Any questions? No. Yes. This, a lot of stuff sitting around there. Is there a designated area for emergency vehicles? Um, there won't be a designated area for emergency vehicles and the blocks make it look bigger than it is. Okay. There'll be spaces in there for everything to occur. Okay. Yeah. Susie, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, um, these vehicles, mm -hmm. like on Fifth Street, we're going to close Fifth Street, but the vehicles won't be blocking the street. It's really more so for um, pedestrian traffic and things that are going across than it is um, their shower truck is not going to block the entire street. Susie? There was a cycling event in town this weekend. Um, what was that? I believe it was the St. Paul Cycling Club time trials, which okay. they do in St. Peter every year around this time okay. of the year. They right. don't request any, um, any... In the past, they have requested okay. assistance from us, but they really don't need much assistance. Okay. They probably did receive a little assistance from um, the sheriff's office further out in the county, Okay. Um, but that's all I know about that. I saw folks manning a couple intersections and thought that if they let us knew, know in advance, we might be able to do more to... They them. really don't require more, and we have a long history with them. I'd say probably more than a dozen years of okay. them doing it, so everybody kind of has the room on what to do. Perfect. Thanks. Any questions? Comments? Um, I know uh, the Chamber, Mr. Lee, has put a lot of uh, time and effort into this, and I think I can speak that if anybody wants to volunteer, they're still looking for volunteers to help with this. 
So if you have some time to do that, anybody, uh, contact the chamber office and uh, Ed and uh, we'll get you lined up. This group provides us with the insurance that we require and helps ensure that the vendors have the right licensing for selling food and all those kind of things too. I should have said Emily will get you lined up and we'll, uh, <laughs> Ed will be there, but Emily will get you taken care of. Any other questions? The resolution approving a city assistance for the ride across Minnesota appears on pages 37 and 38. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions, comments now? Mm -hmm. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Pfeiffer? Aye. Councilmember Aye. Aye. Councilmember Aye. Councilmember Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Resolution passes. Next up, we have the 2018 North 3rd Street Improvement from Broadway to Chatham Bid Award. And so I think uh, Jeff is here to describe that one as well. Um, and uh, his group did the specifications for this, Jeff, and we had two bidders. Yeah, yes, we did. We had uh, two bidders on the project that we received bids on here on March, or May 8th. Excuse me. Um, this was for the improvements of North 3rd Street between Broadway Avenue and Chatham Street. Um, the roadway there is uh, in poor condition, curb and gutters in tough shape. It's some of the oldest, one of the older styles of curb in town. Uh, storm sewer and the intersections are also in tough shape. One of the main uh, reasons for doing the project also was to improve the pedestrian ramp access um, for ADA accessibility in that. So um, the project included all that work. Uh, the city would be doing a portion of this work themselves. Um, the bid, low bidder for the project was Hoffman Concrete out of Mankato. Um, they're about $4,000 below our estimate on the project. Um, they, I'm trying to think, they said that they would be able to begin, I guess, as soon as um, it's awarded. So I know they're excited to get going on the project. And I know the city has got some storm sewer work that the city will do in there also. So the city will begin that work at the same time. Um, the city will also be following up with some milling and then paving that roadway once everything else is complete. So. We recommend awarding that project to Hoffman Concrete out of Mankato. All right. Questions? John? Uh, the screen says that it's partially funded by assessments to adjacent property owners. They've all been notified, they've all been talked to, and they all have agreed to it and signed off on. That's my understanding, yes. But you want to near, we, we have nearly all of them signed off. Yes, we have all of them but one. Uh, signed off right as of now. Okay. All right. Any other questions? The resolution awarding the bid for the 2018 North Third Street improvements from Broadway to Chatham mm. appears on page 41. Is there a motion for approval? So move. Second. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Corman. Aye. 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 Member Aye. Member Johnson? Aye. Member Aye. Aye. Resolution passes. Thanks again, Jeff. Next up, we have a Traverse Green subdivision spec home basement. Yeah, Mayor uh, Zeman, members of the City Council. Um, between the, the City of St. Peter Economic Development Russ, Authority. Russ, just, I'm sorry. I should have introduced you for people that are watching. Oh, may not, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Russ Willie. <laughs> I need no introduction. Right? Yeah, well, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, community Mayor. development director. There, thank you. Sorry, Mayor and uh, members of the council. Um, between uh, Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership and the St. Peter EDA, we've constructed about 81 speculative homes um, in the first two subdivisions, Nicollet Meadows and Washington Terrace. And in in our experience in those two uh, neighborhoods, is we never had to finish a basement. So the spec homes that have been developed and are still developed. Um, provide for finishing of the upper level, whether, um, the, the main floor if it's a, a single story with a basement or uh, the upper level if it's a split. Um, the finished uh, uh, home that we provide has two bedrooms, a bathroom, a uh, living room, and a kitchen dining room area. Um, the basement then, if it were to be finished, plans would include an additional two bedrooms, uh, an additional bathroom, a family room, and then a utility room for the uh, washer and dryer and, and basin, and, uh, et cetera. Um, in this round, in this neighborhood, Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership, two of the three spec homes that they have sold, um, they did complete the basement because of the requirements of the family that was buying them. They, there's no way they could occupy the building or the house with only two bedrooms. Um, so Southwest, given its uh, status as a 
a, a private organization had the ability then to negotiate with a contractor, establish a price, and begin work in a, a rather timely manner. Um, the EDA, should the EDA pursue completion of a basement, um, would be required to go out to bids, um, accept sealed bids, open sealed bids, award sealed bids, and, and we respect that process um, and don't have any problem with the transparency, but however, it's expected it would add six to eight weeks to the project and we may not have buyers that would be um, willing to hang on that long while we uh, arrange for the work to be completed. Um, so. Um, we asked our partners at Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership to contemplate a proposal where they would finish the basement of the EDA spec homes. And uh, Allie Jones from Southwest, um, who works with their mortgage programs, has developed a 14-step process, which is on page 44 of your council packet. Um, essentially, if, if it was necessary to complete one of the two basements, or one of the, the basements of one of the two remaining spec homes, um, Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership would pre-qualify the buyer, have brief qualification letter from the lender. Um, they would work with the buyer then to identify the improvements that are needed. Perhaps they only need one bedroom and they want a bigger family room. Um, they then would, would uh, negotiate the price of that with a contractor and then in, enter into a purchase agreement with that pre-qualified buyer. Um, they would acquire the home from the city, uh, the EDA, with a zero per, zero percent single payment promissory note. So they would obtain ownership of the home, similar to what we do when we sell them a bare lot and they build a spec home. They don't pay us for the lot until after they sell the spec. In this case, they would acquire ownership of the speculative home. They then would finance and complete the basement. And when it was completed, they would uh, uh, commence with the sale to the pre-qualified buyer. At that point, in, in the case of one spec home, they would pay us the $186,500 purchase price. Um, and then they would be reimbursed for the additional cost anticipated to be between $22,000 and $25,000 for the completion of that basement. The EDA would be charged a Oh, what was it, 5% um, construction management fee, and if the basement were to be $25,000, that would be a $1,250 uh, construction management fee. Questions? Yes, sir. Just, just for clarification, the construction management fee is 1.5%. 1.5%, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah page, 40, four, four, page 43, it has 1.5%. One other point of clarification I'd like to make, we would only go uh, do this if we had a qualified buyer who had signed the purchase agreement and wanted to have that basement completed. We wouldn't do this if that was not the case. I think that's an important distinction for this. I, and I apologize. I think, I think my memo is in there on, oh. uh, on item number 6 on page 44 on the last sentence. It said, Southwest will also charge an additional construction management fee of 5% based upon the construction. So I apologize. I so if it was 25000 that would be $1,250 construction management fee, fee okay. proposed to be paid out of the uh, professional line item uh, of the community development budget. Okay. More reasonable. Jeff. Um, Russ, do we have a basement finisher on retainer, or how would we come up with the person who would do that? Is it going to be local? Or are they picked out? Is yeah, again, if the EDA were to do this, we would be required to go through sealed bids, and any licensed contractor then could t take the opportunity to respond and bid on the project. Southwest, um, my guess is they've gone out to bids on their first two homes, and they used one of those contractors to complete the basements of the houses that they sold. So I uh, believe that they would attempt to negotiate with one of those two. Okay. Any other questions? If not, the resolution establishing a process for the sale of the spec homes to Southwest Minnesota Housing to provide finishing of basements appears on pages 46 and 47. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions or comments at this time? Ms. I mean, yep. no, ahead, the Russ. resolution also refers to a 1.5% fee on number 6. So we would, we would be oh. modifying number 6. I missed that. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. It should be changed to 5%. Okay. I like Wait. 1.5. No, it's Wait. <laughs> So there's no change needed. The no, it's res supposed to be five. On, on Allie's yeah. memo, on it's line item to be number five. six, on it's page supposed 44. to be five. So the right answer for the resolution on item number six is five percent rather than one point five percent. All right. So, uh, who made the motion? I did. 
Will you amend it? I will. Amend it to reflect that. And was there a second? There was a second. Jerry, second? Okay. Any other uh, questions, comments? Call the roll, please, Barbara. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next up, we have Russ again for a uh, Traverse Green subdivision realtor fee. Yeah, uh, Mayor Zeman, members of the City Council, uh, come back to you uh, um, asking kind of for an about face and a change in, in policy that staff had recommended to you earlier. Um, again, we've built about 81 speculative homes between the City of St. Peter's EDA and Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership. Um, of the sale of those 81 and then of the other 80 plus lots, um, we provided the provision of one commission to a participating realtor uh, who was able to assemble us with a potential buyer. Um, and in the first two neighborhoods, the realty uh, fee was $750. Staff was of the opinion that given we built 183 houses and paid one, that perhaps it wasn't material, it wasn't necessary. And so originally we had recommended that we go through without a commission. Um, ultimately, a flat commission of $1,500 was established um, for realtors bringing us a potential buyer. Um, we advertised that. We attempted to get realtors to sign a written agreement. They were not willing to enter into the contractual agreement um, for any number of reasons. Um, and then uh, um, City Administrator Prafke and I interpreted the resolution that was adopted to provide us with the ability to give the $1,500 commission in the absence of a written agreement. Um, so ultimately, the buyer of our first speculative home was brought to us and represented by a, a realtor um, from a, a local firm. Uh, the process has changed, and now the buyer's representative is the one that presents the purchase agreement. And in the purchase agreement, the realtor had uh, put down a 2% commission would be paid. Uh, I crossed it out and put in $1,500, the flat rate. The commission or the uh, uh, realtor had indicated that the broker would not accept that. Um, I explained it was set by city council. I had no authority to change or go above it, um, and they very reluctantly, begrudgingly, um, un, un, unwantingly accepted the flat fifteen hundred dollar fee. In the realtor's mind, uh, they were due a two percent commission, which would have been thirty seven hundred dollars. And the commissioner then, perhaps rightfully, feels that twenty two hundred dollars was left on the table. Um, it was a bad experience. I believe that that story has been told repeatedly. I do not believe that at a flat $1,500 we'll be able to get the traction we need in the, in the participation of the realtors. Um, we think the, the realty market has changed. Um, we've certainly been penetrated uh, at a, to a great extent by the Mankato realtors that perhaps weren't uh, very active here uh, 12, 15 years ago when we were doing the other, other subdivisions. Um, one of the other things is changes the <coughs> number of realtors that are out there working. And if there are only 12 houses for sale, perhaps on the market right now in St. Peter <coughs> on the listing, I don't know how that large number of realtors are going to be satisfied uh, or be able to stay in the market. A couple other things we've noticed with our buyers is those that have made inquiry are generally 10 years older than in the first two neighborhoods. And we attribute that largely to student loan debt and uh, uh, the, the, the younger generation uh, delaying marriage and, and families um, and, and Allie uh, largely attributes it uh, to student income debt. Um, so, uh, Mr. Mayor, the staff has, has considered this. We've, we've discussed it uh, greatly and uh, the staff has recommended that we do establish a flat 2% commission for a realtor representing a buyer of a spec home in uh, Traverse Green. Southwest is going to join us with that and offer it on the sale of their spec homes also. Um, the EDA considered this at their last meeting and the EDA has recommended that you do adopt the 2%. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd answer any questions that you or members of the council may have. Questions? Jeff? So if I bring a buyer to you or if somebody walks up to you and says, hey Russ, I'd like to buy a house, then what? If they are represented by a realtor? Not not represented by a realtor. Then there wouldn't be a necessity to pay a realtor's commission. Okay, you wouldn't direct them to a realtor in this case? Oh, no, no. Going <laughs> no, if I get by without paying it, I'll do it. But okay. uh, um, if, if, yeah, and that's happened. Um, that happened very frequently in the first two subdivisions. Okay. Jerry? Uh, when we started all this, uh, the idea was to provide affordable homes for people. And uh, uh, the uh, 
Uh, community development has, has done very well with us up to now. And, uh, and you know, every, every time we're almost certain that almost every year land costs go up, uh, construction costs go up, infrastructure goes up, usually goes up, uh, taxes usually go up every year. And, uh, you know, every time we add 3,700 uh, 3, or that would be without the finished basement on these homes, it makes it less affordable to more people. And uh, I think we've been doing just fine. When we were talking about this in the workshop, somebody said, well, that's, that's an old home if it sets there a year. Uh, to me, if nobody has lived in it, it's a new home. <laughs> but that's my view of it. Uh, you know, we're not really getting a lot of uh, help from anybody else, and uh, maybe we just don't <coughs> put as many uh, uh, spec homes up there. Uh, the uh, uh, maybe we hold back to one or none, for that matter. Uh, the Southern Minnesota Housing has done a great job of of developing it and marketing their, the, their homes that they have and uh, you know uh, the, and then we've also had people that have bought lots and got their uh, own contractor to put up a building uh, that's formulated for them and uh, also uh, Habitat needs lots to set their homes on that they do here in town uh, that's going to fill up and perhaps it's not going to fill up as fast as we wished or uh, thought it would, but it's going to fill up eventually, so uh, maybe we have to wait a little bit longer. And I just think that every time we add cost to it, it makes it less affordable to more people. And so I'm voting no on this. Any other questions, comments? John? Sure. Um, my understanding how the real estate industry works is that there are brokers that represent the sellers. They help the seller find buyers. In this case, the city's the seller, and we're not looking for help in finding, in finding buyers. We're not paying a seller's commission. That's, um, on the other side of the transaction are the buyers. In these days, the world has changed. The buyers are now represented by uh, real estate agents also, the buyer's agent represent the best interests of the buyer. But I just heard you say that uh, Southwest Minnesota um, handholds the buyer and gets them pre-qualified and then has a uh, dozens of mortgage products and helps them choose. And I know they send them to first time buyers classes and generally hold their hand through the entire transaction. So if Southwest is doing that for the buyer, what, what services are, is the buyer agent offering that justify receiving $4,000 instead of 1500 I think it's access to the buyer. I, I, I believe if, if they feel they're leaving $2,200 on the table, I don't believe that they're going to show our houses with the veracity that perhaps they would with those that they'd get the full 2% commission. You're saying they were going to hide our houses from their buyer because they have the buyer's best interest at heart. I would not use like any that. individual agent of that, but well, I believe I, I, that I don't, we I don't are. Know. I'm, I'm trying to understand what, what you're saying, what the, what the situation is here. Yeah, I, I, I think part of it is we, we don't have necessarily the local agents that are willing to expend the social capital in our community. Um, we have one re, uh, local agent, and I told her I was going to say this, and she said, fine. She sold the same house in Nicollet Meadows three times. She did not get a commission the first time, but she's gotten a commission three other sales. Most of these people, it is not their forever home. It's their first home. And if the realtor treats them right, the experience had been in the previous two neighborhoods, that they'll seek out that realtor when they're looking to upgrade or to move out of the houses. I think now when you've got multiple, multiple agencies um, that are becoming much, much more active in the St. Peter market, you don't necessarily have that connection to the community. You didn't grow up here. You're not spending your evenings here. Um, and so I think it's just changed in 12, 15 years, John. If I could add one other point, John, to I think your commentary. Those folks that are pre-qualified through Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership who go to the home stretch classes and the home education classes that come to us directly, um, we would not be paying the commission on unless they were represented by 
a real estate agent many of those instances in those instances so far with some of the homes out there and they have not been represented so we would not have paid that it would not expect to these would only be those folks that come through a buyer's representative as a buyer's agent yeah they, they do work with the buyers to qualify for housing but they don't pre-qualify anyone except in the case of the basements they want them pre-qualified so they don't get stuck with the house in a completed basement and then a buyer that's not able to go through with the sale okay that makes sense any other comments Susie? sure i would say that there are a few other jobs roles that a buyer's agent fulfills and I haven't used one myself because we ended up buying a house for sale by owner. But my sense, and I'll look to the individual who knows a little bit about realtors here, is that um, part of a buyer's agent's responsibility too is simply to help talk you through these different homes, identify features that are beneficial to you or not, to help you consider, is this house the right match for me? Um, they, I don't think, can advise you on what price you should pay for that house or uh, that you know whether this is the house you should buy or not but they can certainly uh, identify features like the neighborhood or the number of bedrooms and those sorts of things and talk to you about how that fits what you're looking for so there's there's a a, a different role that they they take beyond just the hand holding through the the paperwork phase mm -hmm. is that a fair assessment Jeff yeah, I would uh, I would concur with that. You know, I think the one of the bigger things about a, a buyer's agent is they're dealing with a lot of first-time home buyers, and especially in this neighborhood, that's what the the primary source is going to be—the first-time home buyer. First-time home buyer these days is older than normal, and like you said, does have significant um, amount of debt when it comes to school school loans and stuff like that. So they're delaying their their purchasing, uh, but when they are looking for a home, they're looking for a home so they can you know, start their family and that sort of thing too. And it's really important, I would say, that when we've got nine homes on the market, is that about I've heard fair? that number. You know, these homes in particular, I, I'm just surprised. I, personally, I'm just surprised that, you know, you look at the nation right now, and the nation's got a housing crisis. I'm just surprised that these houses are, are taking so long to sell. Um, and I'm hoping that this is what breaks the dam or breaks the log jam in the river that will cause more people to purchase their homes. Because right now there is homes on the market um, and lots for sale. And this is a great opportunity to build your first home tailor built to yourself, however you want it. And I think that should be an exciting amenity to um, buyers as well. Any other comments? Russ, earlier in your presentation on this part, you said there was 183 spec homes and we only gave one realtor 183 fee? single family lots. We also offered the 750 if they brought us a buyer of a bare lot. Okay, so the lot, you're referring to the lots, the 183. 100, yeah, 183 homes okay. were built. All right. 81 were specs that were about 40 us and about 41 Southwest. Okay, that's where I was confused with the memo and what you had stated there. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? The resolution rescinding the flat fee and establishing a 2% realtor referral free fee for assistance with the sale of homes in Traverse Green subdivision appears on page 50. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second that motion. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Council Member Carlin. Aye. Council Member O'Brien. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Pfeiffer. Aye. Council Member Kwame. Aye. Mayor Zeman. Aye. Resolution passes by a vote of five to one. Thanks, Russ. Yeah, thank you. Next up, we have a uh, modification on a job description for billing clerk, Todd. So, Mayor members, um, your finance director, Sally Vogel, is here to talk about the modifications. This is a position that falls within her department, and uh, she's the one that worked on a lot of the, the, the well, I shouldn't say a lot, because there aren't a lot of changes, but the changes that are potentially um, recommended, that are recommended to you that we'll help you take action on. Sally, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, the billing clerk, resigned a week ago. She turned in a resignation. She got a position over in Mankato. Um, 
at Mankato East, that's what she wanted to do. So anyway, so she's leaving at August 1st is her last day. So I went through seeing how this is my first resignation. I haven't been in the job mm -hmm. that long, but um, got to review the job description. And as Todd said, I made some minor changes and mostly in the desired qualifications. Um, through my work and as I've hired other employees, Right now, it was basically an accounting degree, an associate's degree in accounting or a bachelor's degree in accounting. And I expanded that to take both accounting, business, and finance for both of those. And that is because I think with the education that the business world is offering, you get accounting even if you have a business degree or you or in a finance degree, you take the classes. And I think in this position, we can use um, any three of those just to open up the applicants. So that's basically the changes I made going forward. Questions? Susie. Is this the position that we've seen turnover a couple times in the last few years, or is this a different? 2015, Lori's been yeah. here since. Oh, OK. No, I'm thinking of a different position. The that payroll they just filled, what, a year ago, Yeah, I so, believe? So it is true that we've had turnover, but I wouldn't okay consider it unusual in today's okay. world. No, no, no. I, you know, I, we are a little bit spoiled in many of the positions that we have. People have been here more than a decade. Um, this is one that has certainly had more turnover than that, but um, I wouldn't call it unusual. Okay. Let's hope not. John? And we remove, we remove the, um, the desired qualification of work experience in lieu of, in place of a deg graduate degree or an associate's degree. Uh, it used to be okay to have just work experience and be able to fill the requirements of this position, but the requirements of the position have changed, the world has changed, or why is it that we did this? John, if I could, I, I would um, look at it maybe slightly differently than that, in that the qualifications to be able to apply for this job and successfully complete this job have not changed. Those minimum, uh, minimum requirements are not something that we're looking to change. But we are looking at additional education for this position would be helpful with the advent of the multiple layers of software that we have, um, with the accounting that's necessary to do this. It's not just data in, data out necessarily anymore. With the other programs that we have in place, including your solar program and others, this is a little bit more complicated. And so additional education may be a benefit. It doesn't mean that additional experiential value is not provided for. And it is provided for in the desired qualifications. So because of the just desired qualification, somebody with work experience would, who knew that software, yes. would, would qualify. Yep, yes. and that's included on page 54, more yeah. towards the bottom, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeff? Do we give preference to veterans? We do position? give um, preference to veterans. It's a state law, and so okay. we certainly do that. I just don't see it, but that's why it's a state yeah, law. Yeah, it's okay. not a part of the position description that's required to be in there, but it is part of the state law. Just just for some additional clarification, because as you know, you have a department director um, that your position that you're looking to fill. Um, those positions under state law do not require you to provide veterans preference points. However, um, you have, and that's what we've done mm -hmm. with the last two, now three, uh, director's positions, but certainly veterans preference points are provided here, um, not only for um, just veterans, but disabled veterans receive additional points. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Sally, um, you put in here accounting, business, or finance. What if I came in and I had an economics major? Well, I'm not a big, no. <laughs> no, that, that, <laughs> that would work too. I would, uh, would, it, would we be better off uh, with these? You can put these and also adding and and or related field. Um, we could to me, do that. Economics I'd be fine with be, that, yes. Um, would be mm -hmm. part of that. Um, there may be yes. some other ones that I'm not even aware of. You know, That they some, offer now, yeah, correct. You know, if they had some uh, computer-based uh, technology experience might be very helpful. Mayor, I had the exact same thought about economics, so okay. mm -hmm. I yeah, think that's so. wise. There might be, especially at the associate degree level, there might be other even more specific uh, associate's degrees in billing AR. or... There, 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 there could so. be, yeah, right, billing, so. AR. Yeah. So if we just had a, or associated degree field, that might Other be. related people, too. Any, okay. John, you ever smiley? No, just mm -hmm. for the fun of it. Uh, <laughs> any other questions or comments? Just, just, hap just, just happy to be part of the organization where you are in charge. Has you're smile. happy to be here? Or you're <laughs> it, it puts a constant smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I wouldn't say constant because I've seen you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we digress again. Um, is there any other uh, comments or questions? Todd, I guess with that que with the point that uh, Sally was said would be fine, do we need to change the resolution at all, or is that? Uh, I think if someone makes the resolution with those two changes, and that would be for the fourth item and the fifth item under desired qualifications, we'd accept that. Okay. Having uh, said that, is the resolution authorizing the modification to the billing job description appears on page 55. Is there a motion for approval? So moved with the addition of economics or associated degrees to those two line items and qualify desired qualifications. So if I could, just for clarification from the staff standpoint, we would word that as being at the end of those, so that fourth bullet would be associate's degree in accounting, business, finance, or related fields. That's right. And then the fifth would be worded the same. That's fine. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Member Brand? Aye. Member Johnson? Aye. Member Pfeiffer? Aye. 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 Resolution is passes with that amendment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Sally. Next up, we have a request for city <laughs> assistance for Veterans Memorial dedication. Mayor and members, the Veterans Memorial Committee is looking to have their dedication ceremony on July 1st and have asked for assistance with a couple of things. First of all, um, temporary road closure of College Avenue. The, the event itself, the, the ceremony of the event is going to take place not only at the memorial, but they hope to have it happen on the roadway there where they would set up a stage and some bleachers and some other things. So you'll see that map included in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, use of some of our portable bleachers, um, police reserves, and then a street closure on July 1st from about 7 a.m. Um, to 4 p.m. Um, we'd deliver some of the barricades and they'd help set them up. And then we would also work with DOT to provide for the message board signs, both north and south of that location, just to alert, because we do expect it to be a heavy travel weekend, um, to alert folks that College Avenue um, is closed. Um, here's a map that shows kind of how they would like to lay it out and the area that we would um, provide for the closure. Their request is included on page 58. You'll notice that the, what we were recommending and what they requested is slightly different. I want to make sure that I point that out. Um, they requested that the road would be closed down for three days. Um, now I have talked with the organizing committee and that just really isn't necessary. Um, it can be done on that morning very effectively. And so certainly we want to minimize the amount or the time of the road closure, especially on a thoroughfare of that type that's yeah. used heavily, um, certainly. And so they're, they're in agreement with that, although that's not what's articulated in their memo or their letter from May 8th. I have spoken with the committee and they're in agreement with that. Um, if you have other questions, I'm happy to try and answer those as best as I can. Uh, but the resolution is included in your packet. It's actually the last page on page 63. Questions? Ed? In the part um, after meeting with the organizers down below, it's public works will deliver barricades and then the organizers of the event will need to move. Are we having city people down there helping move them or? Is it For the barricades, the group can do that on their own as long as they stick to the appropriate time. We'll have police support there or police reserve support there so they'll be able to do that readily. Okay, because yeah. they got a lot of stuff going on. I just thought if one of if yeah. the reserves it, it, or something could certainly move that, yeah, the barricades. It, we, we can certainly chime in and help some more if I could, though. Um, I set them up for the snowmobile event that closed down um, Gray Street for a half a block during Winterfest last time. Any kind of regular, non-super muscular guy can take care of it in about five or ten minutes, and there'll be additional support down there. So I, I'm confident that it'll work out. Okay. As long yeah. as there's help there. Yeah, yeah, I'm confident it'll work out just fine. Yeah. Uh, the only concern I had was that the stage is, um, the backdrop of the stage is 169, and I'm just concerned with uh, semi-traffic and things like that going by, even on a Sunday, but especially because all the other people that are driving by on July 1st and that weekend, I'm just concerned that maybe there will be too much noise to drown out the, the important things that the people are talking about on the stage. I, I think that the committee, based on the location where the Veterans Memorial is at, is going to struggle to meet some other requirement. This would be a very standard setup to what we would see, which is the audience facing east and the stage facing west. So the projection of the sound would go towards the quieter area 
rather than towards the louder area. Okay. I understand your point. Um, I think that is something that they have certainly considered and I talked with them about. Um, this is the way they'd like it to go. And again, I think really um, works in relation to what we have done with other organized groups who have had noise issues as a part of their activities as well. I'm just, I'm just wondering if it would be possible in some form or fashion to get some of those, those coral band shells from the school down there to help kind of mitigate that noise? It, let let me explain what the stage is going to be. Maybe that would help. So okay. this is the stage that they have uh, requested to borrow from North Mankato. So it's essentially a closed trailer where the side opens up. So there's a top and okay. sides and a back on it as well. So it'll gotcha. project that direction. So it's not a, a flat bed or what we call a flat trailer. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it is not. Flat. Okay. It, it is the mobile trailer. stage. Okay. All I've right. seen that stage and it, it'll, right. it'll work. You know, the, I'd like to say more of a band shell effect. Good. I'm Good glad. point, though. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Jerry, I have a question for you and not related to this part of it, but are they getting nervous about this thing getting done? Do you more yes, involved? Yes, but they've got a schedule. Uh, the groundwork is uh, the cement work is supposed to be started on the 11th. That's which today. Was today when it rained, but uh, and uh, the statue goes up on the 27th. So okay. there's going to be a crane down there to install that, and uh, the flower beds that are going to be placed down there are all in. Everybody's just waiting for the ground to get leveled off and the cement okay. to get poured. Well, like I say, I haven't seen much going on down there lately, and I was just getting uh, kind yeah, of there, wondering. There's some perspiring going on over <laughs> <it>. <laughs> All right. One, one question that yeah. maybe you can answer, too. When does the actual fencing come down? Pardon? The fencing, when does that come down? That will be coming down soon when they start to finish Landscape. it off with the okay. concrete and stuff inside. I suppose they'll keep it up as long as they can to keep people off the fresh concrete and all of that stuff, but... Uh, uh, that's it'll come down ahead of time, and the walls will be covered until the grand opening on the first. Okay. And I, they think they said the program would last something like a half hour, 45 minutes, and there will be a flyover. There will be all kinds of things going on. Cool. Anything else? The resolution authorizing city assistance for the Veterans Memorial dedication event appears on page 63. Is there a motion for approval? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Pfeiffer. Aye. Council Member Cormie. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. That concludes our new business. Next up, we have reports, and I do not have anything at this uh, point. Well, let's see. We were uh, a few days ago, one day last week, we had the uh, groundbreaking for the new hotel, uh, the best, excuse me, Best Western Plus, and um, <coughs> excuse me. That's all I got. <laughs> no, and it was uh, it was. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I think we're fortunate to have them here, and I think everybody will uh, benefit from it. Uh, even the existing uh, hotel, motel businesses, I think we'll, we'll see just an influx also, and uh, uh, hopefully everything works out to the, to the best. So that's all I've got. Mayor and members, I have two reports, one of which is listed on the agenda and one of which is more of a reminder for you. The first one listed on the agenda is just to let you know that the pool is open. If you didn't know, um, we've had um, a couple of days where it has just been fantastic pool weather and actually a majority so far that has not been so fantastic but as you know summer's coming and yeah. so we're confident that will change and so there'll be a new and, and please watch on our Facebook page and in the hot sheet um, there'll be another event that kind of represents that opening day party since the weather wasn't very good for that so please watch for that date and time and we have prizes and other things that go on there so it's a fun time. The second one that I'd like to mention is just to get, make sure that we're on your calendars um, for the 26th of June. 
as you know, we're looking to do interviews that day for the Director of Recreation and Leisure Services. So we don't have nailed down the exact time for that yet. And I know that all of you will <laughs> unlikely be able to attend no matter what time we pick. Um, but please try and keep some space open on your calendar. And as soon as we get to the point where we know how many finalists we're going to have, and so then exactly how this schedule will shake out, we will let you know right away um, to get that on your schedule. Again, the normal rule for you guys in participating in these is that if you can only come for one person's interview, don't come. Um, you got to be there for all of them because your input is really important and we want you to see all of them. Um, I would also like to mention that on the 26th, we'll be having, different than what we did for the finance director, um, we will be having kind of a public opportunity to meet and greet these folks. So you can um, have a cup of coffee, maybe a drink of lemonade and visit with them a little bit. Um, this is a much more outward facing position than is the finance director and so we've done that in the past as well. Um, so we'll let you know when that is and if you can attend that that's great. If you can't that's okay. Our um, goal is to invite the community and certainly those groups that that position interacts with very heavily. The association, school district and others as well. Okay. That's all that I have for you tonight Mr. Mayor. Anybody else? Anything else? Brad? Susie? Just a, a note about the pool. My son started swim lessons this evening and the report is that there were 11 little four-year-olds with teeth chattering jumping Blue in the water. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so it is open and people are using it. It's a great Somewhat deal. under duress. The pool <laughs> is a great deal in St. Peter yet. About 40 bucks for a season pass for your family. You cannot beat that what for entertainment. Value. So maybe there'll we be 11 it. at the dentist tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly, <laughs> quite possibly. Oh, yeah. Promoting business. John. Uh, to have, at, at the be beginning of the meeting, we had a public hearing that was canceled while Ekman talking about refinancing. Um, they may or may not come back with a later request, but my understanding of this is it does not involve the city loaning them any money, does not involve the city guaranteeing any money. This is more of a paper transaction, something in requirement for some governmental unit. Yeah, the term that's been applied to this, um, not only here, but in other communities in the past and is used by your um, financial advisor and your bond council, this is a conduit issuance. So you have no obligation for this. Um, and so um, um, to your point though, your other point, um, I do expect them to bring a request back, but it will unlikely include the other communities that I mentioned at the beginning. Might be just for one of their facilities here within St. Peter. Anyone else? Just yeah, yeah. one quick note, you talked about the pool. Yes. I'd like to thank city staff and whoever was involved in the sidewalk around Veterans Park to get to the pool because I live right down that road Fifth Street and there's a lot of people that use that sidewalk. It's been used a lot <laughs> and it hasn't been there very long. No. Yeah. No, Thank it's, you. It's I'll, well traveled. I'll make sure that gets passed along to the staff. <clears throat> Anything else to add? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. All in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.